The importance of situational awareness. Hey guys, welcome back to the DimCAD channel. I'm Reginald, also known as DimCAD. I want to talk about situational awareness, what it is, the importance of situational awareness, and some of the challenges of maintaining it, okay? First, situational awareness to me is just being alert as to what's going on around you, being aware as being aware of the variables and the people around you, what they're doing around you. It's not necessarily paranoia, just always uh, looking at everybody as a threat, but it's, it's actively just being aware of who could potentially become a threat and what type of situations could be threatening to you. It doesn't mean that you're you're always on red alert or anything like that, uh, but there are levels to it. You know, As you see more and more indicators, threat in indicators and more and more uh, red flags, as I call them, you, you do sort of raise your level of alertness. Uh, we can't always be <laughs> super alert, but I have noticed that since I moved from a, an urban environment with a high crime rate to a rural environment with a not, not as high crime rate, that I have become a bit complacent. That's one of the challenges of situational awareness, uh, complacency. I notice that sometimes I'll just have my phone, I just catch myself with my head just buried in my phone for 10 minutes straight or so and you know anything can happen if your head is buried in a phone for 10 minutes straight and you're, and you're out in public uh you know it, it, that can become an issue you want to at least look around and see what's going on around you what who is around you uh what are some possible uh red flags and just basically what's going on around you you know you, you could you could see it could be a, a beginning of an argument in the corner and you're not even noticing that uh, it, it could be an issue where some guy is uh, exhibiting some sus suspicious behavior and he's about to rob a place and you're not even noticing that. It could be, it doesn't have to be that dramatic, but uh, it could be some entertainers. I've seen a lot of good videos on YouTube, uh, the warrior poet uh, talking about situational awareness and you know, some of the red flags, you know, fidgeting, you know, people, you know, when people scan the room and they're doing it in a very suspicious way. Uh, a lot of times people, bad guys, they scan the room before they do something bad because they're because they're looking for potential threats to them. Uh, uh, for me, part of situational awareness is just really uh, assessing every single person I interact with, assessing the situations of people around me. That's what it's really about. Uh, I don't. I'm very cautious about letting strangers get too close to me, you know, <laughs> because you know the closer they get, the easier it is for them to attack. Uh, and again, we're not talking about paranoia, but we're just aware, aware of uh, strangers, you know, people getting too close to you, uh, you know, when you're walking about in the city or anywhere, you know, just make sure you're not dealing with too many blind spots. Like if you, if you walk too close to a building and there's like a, on, a, on the edge of the building, you know, you, you, you're really close to the edge of the building as you walk by and there's like a corner or something. You know, if somebody pops up from around that corner, they're going to have easy access to you. But if you put some distance between you and that building, as you walk around, if somebody pops around that corner, you have more distance, more time to actually react. Little stuff like that. Um, you know, when I'm, some people prefer, tell you that it's better to park when you're in a parking lot, like a Walmart parking lot, and sort of park close and uh, towards, uh, you know, light, well-lit areas of where people are at. I totally understand that, especially if you're a female. Um, but, you know, I think, I think, Think of that situation a little bit differently. For example, if I'm in a, I, I park far away from other vehicles in a parking lot, uh, mainly because there's usually no other vehicles who are too close to my vehicle. I don't like parking my vehicle next to somebody else's vehicle because if I'm go, leaving the parking lot and I'm going to my vehicle, if there's vehicles around, it makes it a lot easier for a perpetrator to hide behind other, other vehicles and sneak up behind me. They can use those other vehicles as cover. But if I park away from other vehicles, my vehicle is. Uh, out away from other vehicles, so if they try to if they try to go after me, I'm going to see them uh, almost like a mile away because there's no vehicles for them to really hide behind. I don't have to worry about my vehicle. So in that situation, I'm concerned about uh, a robbery or carjacking, something like that. That's what I'm thinking about. Uh, you know, then the flip side of that is your if your vehicle's too far away, you know, somebody could uh, damage your vehicle without people really noticing it. But people, I figure people don't really care about your vehicle anyway. So it's, it's not gonna, I, don't think, I don't think there's going to be many witnesses around anyway. Even if people do see it, they don't care. I, I could be wrong. Uh, another thing is, if there's a situation in the store, i got to get out of there really quickly. I want my vehicle to be away from the other vehicles, so it's easier for me to jump in my vehicle and drive away. If I'm parked near a bunch of other vehicles, i got a bunch of other people trying to park, try to drive out and try to pull out as well. I'm going to be surrounded by vehicles. It's going to complicate my efforts to get away. So that's another little thing. It's just a part of... 
you know, I, I go about your everyday life. Again, you can't go around thinking everybody's a threat, everybody's gonna uh, get you or anything. But, you know, pay attention to body language. That's really important too. Uh, tone in people's voice, you know. It, when people change the tone in their voice and his body language, especially when alcohol is involved, that's another thing I try to avoid those type of places. You know, sometimes I do end up in you know, restaurants where they do serve alcohol, but you know, I try to avoid the bars. In a lot of states, you can't legally carry a gun into a bar anyway, so since I carry guns, uh, it's not a great place for me anyway. Uh, there's just little things like that to keep in mind. You know, it's uh, you know, a lot of times. Oh, oh, I wore put. He pointed out a lot of times bad guys use technology as a sort of a mask what they're up to. Like they'll be looking out to, down at their phone when really they're focused on you. You look at them and they're looking down at their phone or whatever. I thought that was a pretty good tip that he came up with. I thought that was uh, really good. Uh, also, don't let technology distract you, as, as I was talking about earlier, because you know, a lot of times it just, it just it, it helps just to get in the habit of just looking around. Just look. Oh, you know, you don't want to be buried in the phone for two hours. Just look. Okay, what do you actually see? You know, it doesn't have to be super intense when you look around, like looking around like this or anything. But at least keep your eyes open. You know, if, when you're sitting in a car, I've done this before, playing on the cell phone or you know, let's go <laughs> to some website or whatever. Uh, you know, you may want to look at the mirrors, a driver's side mirror, passenger's mirror, see if anybody's coming up behind you. You know, <laughs> you know, this is, be a little more aware. That's something that I need to be doing. Uh, you know, because it's so easy to really become complacent. And that's one of the big challenges of it, especially if you live in an area that you think is really safe. You know, I've heard people say this, oh, I don't live in the city anymore. You know, I, when I lived in the city, I felt like I had to almost carry a gun or something like that. You know, people, that's how a lot of people feel, you know, but they get into other areas and they just feel safe and they sort of let their guard down. And uh, uh, I... I recommend uh, that you don't know, assume your area is safer than what it really is. A lot of people, they, like, I'm going to leave it at that. You know, a lot of people think their areas are safer than it really is. And if you just get in the habit of doing certain things, like being more aware of your environment, if there is a crisis, if there is a really bad situation, if your environment becomes less safe than it was, you're already, you're already working with habits positive habits that will help you respond to uh, really challenging situations. So what are your thoughts on uh, situational awareness? What are some of the things that you think people need to work on? Uh, what are some of the things that you think you should be working on? I know I, I, I need to be more aware of my environment sometimes because I do get complacent. But anyway, situational awareness, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And don't forget the future belongs to those who prepare for it today.